Symptoms are quite familiar, and very likely you'll come up with a correct diagnosis. Yes, it looks like a cold, a common cold. Runny nose, headache, achiness, very often a slight fever. Those are some of the symptoms of the common cold. Well, how do we get into that unhappy state? Do we have cold simply because of cold, because of ice, snow, and low temperature? No, funny thing about colds, where it is coldest, the inhabitants hardly ever get colds. Explorers tell us that Eskimos are cold-free, unless they come in contact with visitors from outside their frozen world. Then if it is not just cold weather, what is it that causes so many of us to catch cold? Scientists think that most colds are caused by extremely small microorganisms called viruses. Viruses, and there are many different kinds of them, can be scattered with each particle of saliva and mucus. When one sneezes or coughs, for instance. But do not think for a moment that cold-producing viruses are spread only by sneezing and coughing. If by some magic, the tiny particles of saliva and mucus could be made visible as a black smudge, we quickly would realize in how many other ways we are apt to scatter bacteria and viruses all around us. For instance, Jane here has a cold. Look at that smudge. Look at those germs she leaves on the doorknob. And here's Bob's hand picking them up. Bob, his hand now covered with germs, picked up from that doorknob, transfers them to a book. Sue, having the bad habit of wetting her finger to turn pages, carries the germs from the book to her mouth, and then passes them along with a pencil to Anne. Anne carries them home and leaves them on the family's dinner table. Yes, even during an ordinary conversation, saliva and mucus particles escape our mouth and easily reach others who inhale them as they breathe. Just remember how breath becomes visible on a cold day. How then, with so many germs surrounding us, can we avoid having colds all the time? Well, fortunately, our body has defenses against this enemy. Normally, we breathe through our nose. The nose, as well as the sinuses, the eustachian tubes, and the throat are lined with a delicate membrane. If, under a microscope, you look at the lining of the nose, we call it the nasal membrane, you can see that it is covered with tiny moving threads. These are called cilia. They move back and forth like stalks of grain when a wind blows over a field. The cilia are covered with a warm, moist, sticky substance called mucus. The nose usually secretes about a quart of this liquid every 24 hours. This mucus, by warming and moistening the air we breathe in, prepares it for our lungs. The mucus also catches and destroys microorganisms, that is, bacteria and viruses. The movement of the cilia carries the mucus down to the pharynx. Then it is coughed out or swallowed into the stomach where any remaining microorganisms are destroyed by the digestive juices. If these defenses are weakened, the cold virus will gain a foothold and cause the inflammations which so often are associated with the common cold. The common cold is not a serious sickness, but still medical science as yet has not found a cure for it. Ah, yes, there are remedies galore, all sorts of medications, which soothe pain and headaches and so bring some relief. However, they do not cure colds. And no matter how convincingly they may be advertised, do not use them without having checked with your doctor. But there is a sound prescription. If you have a cold, don't stay in school, because if you do, 
you may send others home with your coal. If you have a cold, stay home. Stay in bed. This is the prescription which common sense and medical science recommend. Medicines, but only those your doctor prescribes. No others. Warmth, rest, which you can get best when you stay in bed. And while you're there, you might as well make the best of it. Right. Use tissues instead of handkerchiefs. That way you'll dispose of the germs much better than when you blow them into a handkerchief. However, should you not feel better in a couple of days, or if you keep on having a fever, you should ask your parents to call a doctor. You see, what you think is a simple cold could really be the first symptoms of some other disease, such as measles, infantile paralysis, diphtheria, whooping cough, scarlet fever, influenza, and others. However, even if your illness proves to be only a simple cold, it is still important that you take care of it. A cold which is not <coughs> treated might very well back up along the mucous membrane and so invade the sinuses, the cavities in the bones of the face and the skull or the infection may reach the middle ears when it invades the eustachian tubes which connect the middle ears with the throat. Frequently the inflammation also travels down the respiratory tract to the pharynx, the larynx, and the trachea. Your throat feels sore and your voice is husky. It travels to the bronchi. You have a bad cough. And occasionally even to the lungs. And that is pneumonia. These are painful complications, and they often take a long time to clear up. The best defense against the common cold and all these other diseases is to keep up the body's natural resistance. To do so, you must eat regularly and well-balanced meals. That is, meat, vegetables, fruit, milk, and so on. Get lots of exercise and fresh air, but do not exhaust yourself. In cold weather, you must wear sensible clothing to provide proper warmth to remain healthy. Go to bed at a reasonable hour. While you grow, you need about 10 hours of sleep each night. Sleep recharges the body's energies. Protect yourself against infection. Keep pencils and other things out of your mouth. Never take bites of other people's food. Do not use somebody else's drinking straw or glass, not even within your own family. In the bathroom, for instance, use only your glass. And wash your hands frequently and thoroughly, especially before eating. When you wash your hands, you wash away many of the disease-carrying smudges you may have picked up. But if in spite of all these precautions, you still come down with a cold, let us repeat, take it to bed and stay there until it has run its course. This is the safest way to regain your health and to return as quickly as possible to work, to fun, and to play.